Last stop, I assume. Howdy, folks. Steph and Mikey. Steph Gingrich and Mikey North, Blackwell's premier indoor kids. Steph has created something of a business selling pirated DVDs to other students. Ah, D&D with a party of one character. If I had known the Celestial Avenger was bloodied, I would have totally given him my potion. It was a skill challenge. Potion wouldn't have worked. Skill challenge? It's part of the tabletop game we play. You wouldn't understand. I would, though. Bloodied means that you have less than 50% of your maximum hit points. Give me a break, nerds. I've heard of tabletop games. Cool. Got my DVD? One Blade Runner. Director's cut coming right up. Sweet. Five bucks, right? Keep it. I'm just glad someone here appreciates the classics. You even asked for the director's cut, which took out the shitty voiceover and replaced it with a sweet dream sequence. Dream life over real life. That's my motto. Right on. Hey, do you know if Rachel's a gamer? Rachel Amber? You're asking me? Didn't you two go out last night, or was it just like a friend thing? I was gonna say, I'll see your Blade Runner director's cut and raise you Blade Runner the final cut, but I... I'm trying to find the copyright date on this thing, and I think it might have not been that. No! Copyright 2010! It's... This... You got- you got her the wrong one! You, you got her- you got her- it says 2010 on this thing! You got her the wrong one! I mean, she probably asked for director's cut, but I'm like looking- I'm looking at my copy of Final Cut, it says it's copyright 2010. Oh, uh, wait, well, how far into 2010 are we? Did she just have a really ill-timed request to get Blade Runner to the director's cut when Final Cut comes out, like, in a couple months? <laughs> Why do you want to know? <laughs> Steph has a crush. Chloe, you should join her game. Yeah, I don't have 50 hours right now. Thanks, though. We're at the end of the campaign, so it'll only take, like, 20 minutes? What else have you got to do before class? Oh, what the hell. Game on, nerds. Here's a character sheet. You are an elf barbarian. <laughs> My name's Chloe Price, and I refuse to use chairs correctly. Also, I'm or she's trying to cheat and see over the the barrier into what the, the DM's doing. Uh, she's saying that Elf Barbarian... Uh, actually, he could be laughing for two reasons. He could be laughing because Elf is probably not the best choice for Barbarian, but also because Chloe's personality and physical appearance make her actually an Elf Barbarian. Nice. I could totally see myself as an elf barbarian. I know, I'm good. All right, let's get started. You were both famous heroes in the kingdom of Avernon, a once peaceful land now laid to waste by the bloodthirsty raiders of the Black Well. Alone, you have fought your way through the raider camps, seeking their warlord leader, Durgaron, the Unscarred. As you enter the final camp, bloodied and weary, you see your fellow hero approaching from the opposite direction. I raise my staff to you in greeting. I am Elamon, wizard of the Third Circle, foremost advisor to King Tiberius, and sworn defender of Averno. Introduce your character. Y yeah, okay. Uh, I'm an elf barbarian named... Uh, Calamastia. Super into it. Not bad. The two heroes... Hold on. Elamon narrows his eyes at the elf in front of him and says, I am here to defeat Durgaron, the Unscarred. In the name of King Tiberius, what makes you think you are worthy to fight alongside me? I once stabbed a guy in the chest with a sword, and it went all the way through and killed the guy behind him, too. True story. You stand at a three-way crossing. To your left, the raiders' training ground. To your right, their prison camp. 
straight ahead an enormous ostentatious tent that could only belong to Durgeron, the unscarred. Which way do you go? Straight ahead, right? We're supposed to kill the Dur dude. Elamon frowns. The raiders could have some good loot at the training ground, and surely it is our duty to free all those prisoners. Your choice, newbie. Where do you wish to go? Guess it's time to free some peeps. Let's go to the prison camp. You behold a field of standing iron cages, each imprisoning a human villager, calling out for you to free them. Only a small, elderly dragonkin is keeping watch. He notices you, and in terror, runs into one of the few empty cages and locks himself in. Ah, poor little guy. What's a dragonkin? Dragonkin are like little dragon people. They're assholes. I bet he has all the keys. Oh, okay. Hey, shitface! Get out of there! The dragonkin hops up and down, shaking his ring of keys at you. He shouts in a strange language. Whatever he's saying probably isn't flattering. Got any useful spells in that robe of yours? Nothing that wouldn't blow up the cage and everything in it. That makes you a shitty wizard. Why are you a shitty wizard? Wizards are super resourceful, or really every spellcaster in D&D. Is this D&D? Probably. Usually. I'm gonna yell at it. Intimidate. That's a skill I have. Can I do that? I want the little bastard to shit his pants. You can try. What do you say? Listen up, you little lizard. Unfortunately, he doesn't speak common, which means he can't- I cast communication on the dragonkin. Shit. Really? Now he can understand every word you say. Time to work some real magic. So this is called a skill challenge, where you try to use- Oh, I know what this is. I grab the bars of the cage and lean in, nice and close. He steps back, his scaly skin quivering in fear. What do you say? I wiggle my hand. Hey, dragonkin guy. Want to become my meat puppet? How it works is I shove my arm up your ass into your head and then I can control your mouth from the inside to say things. Uh, he doesn't seem to like that idea. Neither do I. The dragon can please with you. Please don't harm me, tall one. But I cannot give you key. Durgeron much taller and meaner than you. You're short, I say. But you can always get shorter. Give me the key, or I'll chop off your legs and beat you to death with them. The... Uh, Dragon can cowers before you, looking left and right. He opens his jaws, and you think he's about to yell for help. I interrupt his yell by shoving my axe into the cage, pinning his head to the bars without hurting him. Then I say the following. This is going to be good. Here's what's up. I'm going to carve the skin from your bones. Then I'm going to turn your skin into a little leather handbag that I'll shove your skinless body into so I can carry it around with me wherever I go. That way, the next time some asshat refuses to give me a key I want, I can pull your body out and show them what happens. How does that sound? Uh, wow. That was nuts. I'm going to give you a plus 10 bonus to charisma. Go ahead and roll. A small pool of urine collects under the elderly dragonkin as, hands trembling, it hands you the keys. Then it dies of fear. Awesome. Yeah! Go team! Why don't you start unlocking the prisoners? I'm on it. As you free them, the prisoners run away from you in fear. What's next? <laughs> All right. That shit really response to uh, communication being cast was such a genuine Dungeon Master moment of like, oh fuck, the players are doing it again. Loot sounds good. Let's go to the training ground. Sweet. Upon arriving at the training ground, you are spotted by a heavy set orc who immediately shouts and points. There are a dozen raiders on the training field, all of whom raise their weapons and charge. Okay. So what do we do? I cast 
Urgle's acid blast. Um, overkill? Bam! You conjure up a wave of acid that washes over the charging orcs. Every raider suddenly starts screaming and writhing in pain. There's a sweet and sour kind of smell as the flesh melts off their bones like warm candle wax. Holy shit. You see why I haven't really needed a partner? The heavy set orc sergeant still remains. He runs at you swinging a massive warhammer. All yours. Okay, let's end this. Fatal cleave. You swing your great axe downward with both hands. The orc blinks, then splits open like a hot dog bun. Fuck yeah! I'm awesome at this game! It's going well. What about the loot? Well, as the training ground is now a roiling pit of acid, it's unlikely any loot survived. Dang. My character raises her axe. You'll pay for ruining all that loot, Elamon. By my honor, I apologize. Here, take this potion as a gift. Thanks, dude. What's next? It's tent time. You enter the tent to find Durgaron, warlord of the raiders of the Black Well, sitting comfortably at his throne. He's a huge red-eyed minotaur, swathed in a fine black cloak, gripping a two-handed sword that's easily six feet long. His laughter bellows. Wah, ha, 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 ha. Your lands and people are already mine. Your deeds here mean nothing. Your kingdom was weak. You are weak. What an asshole. I got this. I cast Zael's cataclysmic cone of fire. The fire fizzles out on contact. Durgeron laughs again, holding up his right arm to show off his bracer of fire immunity. Shit. All of my battle spells are fire-based. Except for, you know, Acid Blast, which someone used unnecessarily to show off for Chloe. Calamastia? What'll it be? I want to punch that stupid man-cow in the dick. Like, right in the dick? Right in the dick. You miss. Durgeron burst out laughing as you stumble past him. Asshole. He gores you in the side with a horn. Eight damage. Ouch. What do you do next? After the previous encounter, that's exactly what I assumed was going to happen, is that she was going to punch him in the dick if I, if I chose punch. <laughs> like, in the dick? What's Wrathful Rush? It's like a shoulder slam, an angry, angry shoulder slam. Okay, I do that. You scream with wrathful rage, then charge. Durgeron is caught off guard, and he fails to dodge. You slam your shoulder into him, knocking him back and doing some damage. Hell yeah. Next. Oh, holy shit. Uh, annihilation strike. That sounds boss as fuck. One? That's bad, right? Not for me. As you take your first step, you trip on a rock collapsing onto the ground in a clangy jumble of metal. Your axe swings wildly to the side. Mikey, roll a reflex save. Oh no, three. Your axe strikes Elamon's leg. Um, legs, plural. Severing both feet at the ankles. This game is awesome. My feet? Durgeron moves toward the crippled Elmon. Oh, shit. I told attack, you of this was my attack of opportunity, attack of opportunity, attack of opportunity. Tell me my character might die. Durgeron approaches, stomping his bloody hooves. Stomp, stomp, stomp. This is all my fault. Sort of. What should I do? I jump in front of Elamon. Wow. Thanks, Chloe. I mean, thanks, Calamastia. Okay. 
Durgeron has now turned his attention toward you. Bring it. He charges, thrusting madly with his great sword. Shit! Oh no. Your attempt to dodge his thrust fails. Durgeron laughs as he impales you on his blade, lifting you high into the air. Seriously? I can't do anything with that stupid bracer. I'm sorry, Chloe. Hey, I chopped your feet off. We're even. You feel your strength draining away as Durgeron lifts you higher into the air. It hurts like hell. What do you do? Wow, somebody with magic power is telling Chloe that they can't save her. What a change. What a twist of a surprise. I take one last swing at Durg... Dur Durface's head. You'll have to roll high to hit. You're almost dead. Oh no. 20. Hmm. 11. Nope. You swing catching Durgeron on the side of his head, severing one horn. But you don't do enough damage to kill him. What an asshole! He laughs, then rips you off his sword with a vicious jerk. You die painfully. So mean. I'm sorry, Chloe. I have to escape. Hey, man. If you can, do it. I cast Warden's Hideaway. You sure? It's all I've got. You summon a spectral door, which shields you from Durgeron. Light flares out, blinding him. The door swings shut, then disappears. You are gone from sight and cannot be harmed. I guess I'll have to come back when I'm stronger. That was fun. Check out what I drew. Mikey's got serious drawing skills. Wait, he just drew that during that... That was really that was really fast, actually. Holy crap. Also, you're gonna have to make that character shorter. I said I was gonna make the other character shorter, but then I made yours shorter by cho chopping your feet off. Also, it occurs to me that might have not been an attack of opportunity situation because she was probably prone from being knocked over, which would probably mean that him stepping away from her probably would not provoke an attack of opportunity. But really, I was just waiting for a chance to shout out a rule correction just because I was wondering if there'd be any chances for them. Sorry I died and left you out there to fend for yourself. It's cool. I'll get him. Eventually. Glad you enjoyed it, Chloe. Yeah. I'll adventure with you anytime. <laughs> we'll see. Thanks for the game, nerds. Says the guy who, the, the lady. Duty, check. Next stop, chemistry class. Joy. Calling them nerds while you're getting your pirated copy of, uh, of, uh, Blade Runner while quoting the title of its source material in a letter that you write to your friend imaginarily. I see your electric sheep. I have that too. Thanks again for the game, Chloe. Super fun. Next time will be even better. Not the worst time just to mention if you're if you're here and you're not a regular, uh, if you go to my channel and search Grave of Man, there's a pretty goddamn long D&D series on this channel. Actually it was uh, first I'm late to class. That's just one more excuse for mom to sick David on me. When I saw the dragonkin show up. I'm like, is it can this be Drez? But then the way he behaved, I'm like that's that's not Drez. That's not dress at all. See you in class. Nope. I realized I never talked to him afterwards, after the like the cutscene conversation, so I was curious to see if there's more conversation to be had, but there isn't. Your hand actually changes what's written on it. That's freaky. I have questions. They will not be answered, because it's a video game mechanic. I'm officially out of excuses to stay out here. Must mean it's chemistry time. I mean, it's not like she's going to class. She's just sitting around, isn't she? The future needs excellence. The future's an asshole. Yeah, take that future, dick. Seriously, my chemistry teacher's just sitting there. Shouldn't she be going to class? I suspect it might be too early to go to class. We should sit out here for another three hours, even though there's no one else to talk to. got here? Twitch. Don't call me that! True North. A jock so dumb he makes jocks look bad. 
Guess Nathan Prescott made the shit list. Oh, wow. This is some really weird crap, Prescott. It's not yours. Give it back. I hate that you're on the team now. You're such a loser. Guys, no need to fight. You can both be losers. The mute speaks? Whoa, whoa! You earn a spot on the squad, Twitch. You don't have your dad try to buy off the coach. At least my family pays tuition. How much financial aid does your deadbeat dad need again? Wow. Dick move, Nathan. My dad lost his job at the shipyard when your dad closed it down. And you want to talk shit to me? Leave Nathan alone. You know something, Prescott? I'm going to do you a favor. You can't be a part of the team and be into this stupid crap at the same time. You're a piece of shit. I am going stop to it. kill you. You guys, stop. Chloe, do something. Don't just stand there watching. The sad sight of having children fight the proxy wars of the the conflicts their parents have with each other. The only way to stop a bully is to be aggressive. I've got to put Drew down. Back off, idiot. What the hell did you just say to me? Idiot. You're not used to a word that big, are you? Don't be scared. You're seriously defending Nathan Prescott? How about picking on someone your own size? Which I hear is pretty small. You're such a crazy freak. Mind your own business. What's crazy is that you haven't been held back yet. How is that possible? You want a piece of this? You mean your budding bromance with Nathan? You're clearly into him. Just pull his hair already. <laughs> did you just laugh? I did. Chloe just owned you. Shut the fuck up, fresh meat. You shut the fuck up. Go, Samantha. Guess you got lucky this time, Prescott. Had two girls show up to save you. Take your pervy picture book. Are you okay? You think I need help? From you? You're welcome. Are you alright? Thanks for sticking up for him. People think just because of his family. Everything okay here? <laughs> No problem, Skip. What a weird interaction. You got lucky this time, now that I have been defeated and now power and now powerless to throw things into the fountain. Like you can still just do it. Like what I have been defeated. The girls have saved you. <laughs> what a weird dialogue. I don't like how we left things. We'll talk more tonight. Perfect. Is that a sarcastic perfect? No. One of these days, I, I am running out of time. Maybe I should do it now. There's a lot of details you can spend time on in these games. One of which being that you can dig through like the past of your of your conversations with people. Will you be joining us for supper? No thanks. Will you be coming home at some point tonight? Chloe? Will you be home by curfew? Oh, that's all what we saw before. Elliot. Banish test sucked. Lucky if I lucky if I passed. Aw. Lo siento. No, I think I did okay. Cool. What are you up to? Not much. Got shit to do later. Oh. Okay. You finish chem homework? No. Dude, that's the third time. I already know everything. Even Frank. Your shit's here. Hell yeah. But tapped out, sorry. Your loss. Hey, you can hold it for me for a day, can I? I'm your favorite customer, are you? Frank, you holding? You still owe me. You gonna have me whacked? 
Yes, please joke about that over text. Um, you deal drugs on this phone. Anyway, come on, it's 420. I'll meet you here. Uh, I'll meet you if you have the cash. Ah, uh, rain check. So sorry, I have- I've been bad about e emailing. Texting is better for me anyway. Yo, it's Max. How's it going? You there? Uh, sorry again. I've been really busy. You'd love Seattle. More in a bit. Cool. Maybe some hitchhiking in my future. Hey, hippie. All these messages are all spread out by like weeks at a time. I'm so sorry. Maybe we should get, uh, set up a time for- to call. No worries. I'll check my dance card. It's 7 p.m. on Arcadia Bay. What is it? 2019 in Seattle? I know, right? Maybe this weekend. Sure. Anytime. Let me know. Yo, Queen of the Crickets. What's the latest? Max? Oh. Did I do everyone here? Mom, Elliot, Frank, Ma yeah. Steph. Zoom. Hey, is this Chloe? Oh, this is, we just had this conversation. So that's all new. Alright, well, we're all caught up on text messages. I like those details a lot. All right, Chloe. Better head in. Chemistry won't bore itself. Apparently, my new stepfather, not stepfather, future stepfather, doesn't have my phone number yet. That pic would actually make a sweet tattoo. Oh, good. You're here. I almost didn't recognize her without her the crazy hair. That looked like I had a lot of work. Like that was that looked hard to do the hair from the first chapter. I do beseech you, chiefly that I might set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I have broke your hest to say so. Good. Admired Miranda. Indeed worth what's dearest in the world. Many a lady I have eyed with best regard, and many a time had listened to... Uh, many a time, the harmony of their tongues... Uh, hath I listened to... Hayden, you're killing me. You've had weeks to be off book. Sorry, Mr. Keaton. No, don't apologize to me. Apologize to your scene partner, who's been very accommodating, and to your other fellow actors, and most of all, to yourself. Mr. Keaton! Sorry to interrupt, but does this look better? I had my mom take it in a bit. Rachel looks awesome. This is getting as surreal as last night. Looking good, Rach. Very cool. Exquisite, Rachel, as always. Mr. Keaton, I'm still having trouble with... My affections are then most humble. I have no ambition to see a goodlier man. I mean, does she really mean that? Especially because I just straight out told her I've been banging all the ladies. <sighs> yeah, that is hard. We've talked about that line forever. We need a fresh perspective. The question is, are Miranda's feelings of instant passion for Ferdinand just inexperience in dramatic circumstances, or has she actually just met the love of her life? What do you think? Miranda's an idiot, because falling in love is stupid. <laughs> what is she, 12? Actually, she's about 15, so your point, whoever you are, about being an idiot or being naive is well taken. Thanks, Mr. Keaton. Later. See you later, guys. Oh, no. I have first period improv with a class full of freshmen now. Your eye looks fabulous. Where'd you get it done? Uh, what? <laughs> Just kidding. That asshole really clocked you. It wasn't a big deal. I'll just be a minute. Okay, so why am I here again? Oh, could you grab my belt for me? I think it's in my bag over there. Uh, y yeah, sure. Okay, uh, get the belt. Don't say any stupid shit and don't, like, fall down. <laughs> Should be doable, right? She might actually be a good influence on Chloe. Just by showing her that, hey, 
instead of being so worried about whether you're cool or not or whether or not you're like a sheep or whatever just fucking engage in shit and care about stuff and just let that happen instead of refusing to ever engage in anything ra will suck as prospera if vc had any talent maybe she would have gotten the part talent is that what got mr k to cast you slut guess they don't call it drama lab for nothing they call it drama lab who calls it drama lab hey now sharing is caring to internet or not to internet get all up in there i have feelings about this Oh, it's Most of them are not good feelings. The exact same post. <laughs> Why do theater kids take themselves so seriously? Rachel Amber, newcomer to Blackwell Academy. Rachel Amber just blew the doors off her audition with a heartbreaking rendition of Blanche from Tennessee Williams' The Streetcar Named Desire. Other interests include athletics, debate team, booster, boosters fundraising, local history, and nature. Rachel hopes to one day grace the stages of Broadway and the silver screen of Hollywood. Nathan Prescott playing Caliban, a favorite son of the oldest and most influential family in Arcadia Bay. Nathan hopes that his performance of The Tempest will only further the legacy of the Prescott name at Blackwell Academy. Playing Caliban has been a challenge for the sophomore who enjoys sports, photography, and casual hangouts with many friends. So setting up the idea that Nathan was this, like, kind of nerdy kid that was, like, into drama and, like, drawing and stuff like that, but then, like, maybe got picked on by other members of the sports team he was on, or background conflicts related to the fact that his dad is getting a bunch of pe uh, people's parents fired and having real direct uh, effects on their lives, which affects his school life in return. But also, if I remember correctly, the, the season one really heavily hints at him having straight up like psychological problems that need to be treated. Oh, those there. Dana Ward playing Miranda, a sophomore. Dana has performed in two other productions at Blackwell Academy since her freshman year. Dana enjoys football, go Bigfoots, social media, and school dances. She hopes to be a member of the Vortex Club when she's a senior. Oh, what a great, uh, what great aspirations to have. Hayden Jones playing Ferdinand. The show marks the introduction of Hayden Jones to Blackwell Academy's drama club. He auditioned on a dare, and as it turns out, actually really digs acting. A sophomore, his other interests include playing sports, herbals, and a long and taking long walks in the woods. Okay, there's actually a lot of people here. Juliet Watson playing Ariel. Is that who we just saw a second ago? Or was no that was Dana, right? Yeah. The way they animate faces and the similar hair colors are gonna make it a little hard to tell Rachel, Dana, and Juliet apart if we're not careful. Like for a second there I thought that I got dragged in and Dana and that, that was Rachel on the stage. I'm like, no, that's a new character, because Rachel then walked in. I'm like, oh okay, shit. Juliet Watson playing Ariel. Juliet's primary interests include journalism and social activism, but she is very excited to be debuting this spring in the role of Ariel, the capricious and powerful spirit Prospera has enchanted and bound to her to do her magical bidding. Travis Keaton, directing a veteran of Broadway. Oh, just fucking put that out there. Travis Willoughby Keaton serves the prestigious Blackwell Academy as a teacher of the dramatic arts, mentor, and friend. He hopes this humble reinterpretation of Shakespeare's masterpiece can inspire the next generation of the country's leaders to strive for greatness and never to forget his motto, Asgatia Art. Oh my god. So he put Latin in his fucking bio. He, dro he name drops Broadway and talks about how he's gonna, like, be training the future leaders of America. With with the, by reinventing Shakespeare, holy crap! He's a bit all over himself, isn't he? Oh, that was way less dirt than I was hoping for. Disappointing. This poster definitely says something. The word is quell.